what is up everybody and welcome back we have the genesis out behind us and we're going to be doing a full walk around of the car today it is above 40 degrees today it's one of the last nice days we're going to have this year i think so i figured let's get this car out hopefully the wind today isn't too bad i'm kind of hoping these buildings behind us kind of block out as much wind noise as possible so we can get through this video but um just a quick note I'm not going to be doing any cinematic shots of the car right now. If you do want to see cinematic shots, my friends Eric and my friend LaShawn did cinematic style video edits of the car on this current setup. I'm going to link those two videos in the description. I'm also going to link a full list of parts, mods, and all that stuff in the description. So if you missed it or I forgot to say something, you can read it and it'll all be there. Uh, second thing is, um, obviously I'm going to list all of the suspension parts on the car but since it's on the ground and not in the garage on jack stands we won't be able to see any of that so if you're curious you have a genesis coupe and you want to see exactly what my suspension setup looks like how i'm able to drive the car so low the fitment what control arms i run how i have it adjusted any of that stuff that we won't be seeing in here like the video subscribe to the channel comment down below that you'd like to see that video and i'll try my best this winter to put the car up on jack stands and get as many good shots and get an in-depth walkthrough of the suspension so that way you guys for those who want to see that will be able to see that but with all that being said we're going to get through right into doing the walk around of the vehicle i got a cheat sheet on my phone hopefully i don't forget anything so let's just get right into this all right, so to start off the overview of the car itself, for those who don't know, the car is a 2014 Hyundai Genesis Coupe 2.0 Turbo R-Spec. R-Spec just means that it has a manual transmission, Brembo brakes, and an LSD. Uh, for 2014, that was the only way you could get that combination of parts. The R-Spec model does mean that we do not have powered seats, navigation, push to start, or a subwoofer but in all reality for the seven and a half years i've owned the car i've never missed any of those parts um and then for 2014 they did not make a 2.0 track model like they did for the 3.8 and i did buy this car brand new all right so before we get into the exterior of the car i just want to go over and just run through all of the quote-unquote performance parts that have been done to the car that you can see at the moment um to start off like i said earlier it is in our spec we have the brembo brakes um and then we have the r1 concept slotted broders i have actually really liked those uh the center pieces of them is like coated so they don't rust up after it's been sitting in the driveway or sitting out in the rain that is really nice i have the ebc brake pads i had other pads a while back i've gone through a couple different sets i never liked them they squeaked or they created too much brake dust these ebc ones i forget which ones they are but they don't squeak and they don't produce a ton of brake dust so that's why i keep those on the car uh, we do have stop tech stainless steel brake lines a torque solution short throw shifter and then uh, the k n intake that you saw a few videos back and hks blow off valve that once again uh, you saw that a few videos back the exhaust is a isr um, downpipe We've had to replace that multiple times this year and then beyond that it is a custom exhaust all the way out the test pipe is a custom test pipe with a qtp wide pipe with a qtp three inch electronic cutout goes back to the axle back to a magna flow um i forget what series muffler but it's a single inlet dual outlet to i think these are three and a half inch um slant wall exhaust tips that are just poking out a little bit to give you like a mini blast pipe-esque look um funny story about these is i actually wanted them really long out um and the exhaust shop was like no we're not doing that and they kind of compromised with me and did it like this and i'm super happy he did that because if they stuck out any further i know i'd regret it and i think this looks good it does like the mini blast pipe look but it's not ridiculous it's not obnoxious and then it keeps the rear bumper if there's ever any soot or stuff pretty clean so i'm very happy that he uh kind of talked me out being wicked ignorant with the exhaust tips i really like these one of my favorite parts of the rear end of the car uh they are cut just a little bit to follow the curve of the bumper can't really see that it looks like they're straight here but they're not trust me
All right, now to jump into my favorite part of the car is the suspension. This is what I like the most. This is what I've spent the most time on this car for. Uh, if you've watched any video on the channel so far, uh, you've probably understood that it is bagged. It is on air suspension. Uh, to cover the front strut first is a PBM comp strut with a PBM bag over conversion on it. And then the lower mount on the strut has actually been switched out for a D2 that has been slotted. And then the camera plate is a custom one that I designed and it had a friend of mine machine out for me. Uh, we are running a PBM, no, an ISR front lower control arm and an ISR front tension arm. And I have a single piece extended outer tie rod end to wrap up the front suspension. On to the rear, once again, it is a PBM comp strut with a PBM bag over conversion. Uh, this is a true strut conversion on the car. Uh, for those who don't know, from factory, these come with a shock separate from a Springer bag. This has been converted to have only a true air strut in the back of this car. Uh, on top of that, I'm running a PBM rear upper control arm, a PBM rear lower control arm, an ISR, rear upper traction arm, an ISR rear lower traction arm, and an ISR rear toe arm. And that pretty much sums up the rear suspension. Now, a couple quick notes. If you wanna run the PBM lower control arm, you do have to have the PBM true strut conversion. That is why I have the uh, PBM true strut conversion so I can run that adjustable lower control arm. That gives me a little bit more wiggle room so that way, when people camber these cars out and they have axle problems, which I've actually never had on this car, it's because they are pulling in the top on the upper control arm way too far, binding up the axles and blowing it out of the knuckle or the hub or the diff or wherever they're breaking it. I've never had a um, axle problem or a diff problem or anything in the car because it's not to um, put it bluntly, it's just set up correctly. Uh, if you want anything over like 10, 11 degrees, this is definitely the way to go. All right, so just a quick little note here too. If you change out one control arm on the rear of these cars, you do have to change out all four of them. And those four include the rear up control arm, rear upper traction arm, rear lower traction arm, and the toe arm. That does not include the rear lower control arm. Um, I know a lot of people get the rear lower control arm confused with the rear lower traction arm. They are two different things. Only PBM makes an adjustable rear lower control arm for these cars. And like I said, you do have to run the PBM true strut conversion to run that control arm. But if you are just doing the rear upper control arm, you do have to get all four of the other arms I just listed. My suggestion to anybody who's starting off modifying their Genesis Coupe and wants to do control arms is to just buy a full ISR kit. They are still fairly cheap and pretty well built. I've been running most of those arms for five years on this car and I've never had an issue. Um, that kit will control the two or will include the two front control arms and the four rear control arms. Um, like I said, if you're starting out, you wanna buy control arms, just buy that kit. And then down the road, if you wanna ever upgrade to PBM upper control arm like I did, you can do that. But everything else needs to have a supporting part to run the upper control arm. All right, so with all that being said, the car is sitting at about 14 degrees of camber, give or take a half a degree aired out. It's, I forget the exact number, I believe it's 14 and a half-ish, 14, somewhere around there. Um, fitment, we'll do a fitment check here. Rear and front, and then that'll lead us into the wheels. All right, so moving on to the wheels on the car. These are Wedge Crans Baz Rays. This is my absolute favorite face design. Um, they are 18 by 12 and a half, negative 16 in the front with an eight inch lip, uh, and then a 18 by 13, negative 91 in the rear with a nine inch lip. Um, we have white faces, rose gold lips, the hardware and the valve stems on the wheels, if you can see that, have been particle coated to match. Um, and then the front tires are Hankook 275, 35, 18, and a 285, 35, 18 currently. All right, so to jump right into the exterior of the car, um, first things first, start with the obvious. The car is running a remake fender flare kit and has been wrapped a Nozatec Mamba green metallic. Um, to move on to the front bumper, 
Ghost. This is an M&S Ghost Shadow bumper. Uh, from what we were told when we picked this up from M&S, they said that this was the first one that they sold in the US. I don't know if that's true. That's just what they told us. Um, to match up with the remake flares, I did have to make custom front bumper extensions. I did hand lay these completely by hand. Uh, these are full custom. I did these all myself, hand laid fiberglass, body worked and everything. I think they came out absolutely fantastic. A lot of people don't even know that I made them like they're off the shelf, but I did make these 100% from scratch. Um, and then the front grill is obviously not the front grill that M&S gives you with the uh, bumper. They actually just give you some weird cover thing that only covers half of the bumper. I mean the um, crash bar with some mesh thing and it looks pretty bad. This is an OEM grill that I've been retrofitted into the bumper. It was a lot of work. It does not directly bolt up. Got a cut, shorten, plastic welds, uh, make mounts, do all this. Uh, I did that last summer when I was doing the whole car over. Um, so unfortunately I don't have any video of that. I might try and make a video if enough people have watched this far into the video and uh, are curious how I did this. Uh, I might try and break down a video and kind of show you everything that I did to get an OEM grill to fit this bumper. Um, why M&S didn't just make this grill opening a little bit bigger so you could fit an OEM grill? I don't know. They do offer aftermarket grills for the stock bumper, so that would have just been able to mix their aftermarket grill with their aftermarket bumper. Uh, I think they should have done that from the factory or from the get-go. Um, but yeah, that is my front grill retrofitted to my bumper and the custom front bumper extensions. Um, onto the headlights. These are... OEM headlights that I opened up and painted everything black on the housing and then all the chrome accents are painted white with the um, clear corners. Uh, they're not crazy aftermarket uh, headlights. They're just factory headlights. I super, super love these. Uh, they're just simple, clean. They look awesome. And then the grill on the front if you've never noticed or if you've never noticed some pictures but the ribbon is white the grill is white so that this whole line flows seamlessly from one part to the other uh, so that is not just a random white grill there is a reason for that and then we just have the black genesis badge uh, i tried to put uh, my hyundai badge back on because i thought that would be funnier than running the genesis wings but i don't have any anymore so we uh, just left the black Genesis badge. All right, so to jump into the hood now. So this is a VIS AMS carbon hood. Uh, we have had it re-clear coated because the clear coat or the gel coat that comes with was starting to fade and get white haze spots everywhere. Um, the fitment on these things is mediocre. Uh, I used to run a lot of uh, Gemini parts on this car two different Gemini hoods. They fit a hell of a lot better, pretty much just like a factory hood. Um, my girlfriend and I spent like hours and hours, almost a full Saturday months back after this and the trunk got re-cleared to get everything to line up properly. We had to shim up the rears, mess around with the rubber bump stops around the front radiator support. But uh, long story short, we got them to line up pretty good. This is the best lined up wise it's ever been. Um, really happy with it now. Clear coat looks good. Uh, no more fade spots. Happy with the outcome so far. It is a very, very, very popular hood on these cars. Uh, pretty much everybody runs this because these are one of the best looking hood options for these cars. Um, just to note, the mirrors, door handles, and the roof are the factory paint on this car. The car is black. Um, those are the only parts that are painted that have been um, unwrapped for the longest time. Uh, this car actually has barely ever been sitting with the OEM paint. Uh, I think when I bought it brand new, it lasted like five months before we um, plastic dipped it back then. And then since then, it's pretty much always been wrapped excluding the roof mirrors and door handles onto the back this is once again an ams vis or vis ams carbon trunk uh they have been re-cleared just like the hood um 
nice trunk once again extremely 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 popular for these cars um funny story with this is i actually ordered this one of the first uh trunks they ever made when they made these a few years ago and it sat in my garage for so long or my grandfather's garage so long that everybody in the world had it um i wasn't gonna run it but it's just such a good looking trunk decided i would run it anyways uh moving on to once again another super popular part for these cars if you see my other videos on the taillights these are spec d taillights the black housing with the white housing and then the true clear lenses i love these things once again they're really popular but you just can't go wrong these things look absolutely absolutely fantastic um, for the diffuser can't really see it very well but this is just the cheap ebay poly diffuser on this car these things are pretty much indestructible it scrapes on my driveway when i leave i've never had to worry about it breaking they bend they flex they're awesome and super cheap and then one of my favorite favorite like little things on the car is this hic rear roof spoiler i don't know why i like it so much when i tell people like this is like my favorite thing on the car they kind of laugh at me sometimes but i love these things once again they're super cheap you get them on ebay for like a hundred dollars or less and i think they just totally transform the look of the car they just look so plain without that sitting right there i think that pretty much wraps up the outside of the vehicle all right so now we're going to jump into the interior of the car this is actually one of my favorite parts of the car it's not crazy um i did a lot of this fabric work about five years ago uh so it has gone a little dirty uh this winter we're going to try and clean it up but uh we'll just start with the door card right here um so this is like the oem door card area uh that's been wrapped and then this lower section is where like the little map pocket is and stuff um, these come off pretty easy on these cars this part you do have to cut out some plastic welds and then reattach it I think I used really stubby 3 8 inch screws to attach it and not poke through the rest of the door card um, the chrome door handle right here these fade for a lot of people and chip off and stuff so we just went ahead and i wrapped it up and if you actually look at the fabric and the pattern they actually line up almost perfectly um between the three different pieces here uh there are a couple little like hidden like easter eggs i guess you can call it <laughs> if you look under the door handle on both sides i have the dragon peeking through here and then i also painted as much of the interior chrome type thing um white in the car as much as i could the mirror caps are wrapped and then another little like kind of easter egg hidden thing that nobody notices is that the red reflectors on this are actually wrapped with a nice little flower leaf right there um oh another thing is if you look down there i even wrapped the little rubber bottom part in this so this like whole thing has been completely done and then obviously the chrome uh, door latch and lock handle have all been painted as well to move on to the car all right this is an NRG steering wheel i've seen a lot of people bitch about this on instagram that i have a fake steering wheel um i run this just because all the other brands are super concave and they're too close to me this is the most comfortable so if having an energy steering wheel means anything to you i apologize but this is so comfortable to me it's not super close to me as you can see i'm short i'm sitting pretty close to the steering wheel um yeah so that's why we run an energy steering wheel this is an energy um, quick release and a short hub i might take the quick release out and just run a short hub and then run a like grip royal or other company steering wheel to make it more concave because i do like that concave look like i said with the quick release it's just too far pushed forward um yeah so that covers that this little control thing right there that is the display readout for the tpmet sensors that we put on the wheels like way back when one of the first videos on the channel i usually have it sitting down here but with it being in the garage now some sunlight comes through and can keep this thing charged while it's sitting in the garage then when i drive or when we're at shows i usually tuck it down there so it's not um as obvious uh as far as the airlift 3h controller i have it mounted up here it's right at the door handle i mean at the um top of the a pillar 
So that way when I'm driving, I can just look at it, make adjustments, do all that stuff on the fly. It's super convenient um, and it's way out of the way, yet it's always in like the perfect place to look at it or adjust it or anything like that. I love this location. And then that'll bring you up to the A-pillars wrapped in the same, um, the uh, tatsu fabric they call it, <laughs> um, on both sides. And then another little like hidden Easter egg, if you can see, is that his head is actually facing outward of the window and I have the opposite side one on that side. So that way, every single one of these dragons in the car is actually facing outward on the windshield and the doors are looking like they're flying out of the interior of the car on both sides. So that did mean that I used a ton of fabric, but as you can see, this one's facing the back. So if you open that door, it looks like it is flying out the door. Um, Center console, same thing, tattoo wrapped, um, uh, screen shroud, and then the outside shroud bezel has been painted white. The whole interior, this is the same fabric. This is actually lined up. This is like three different pieces that has been lined up as good as possible. Most people don't know that it's different things. And then nice little, little Easter egg. We have yet another little dragon on the little door cover right here. And it all flows pretty well into the shift boot and then my favorite everybody's favorite at car shows the angry orchard uh shift knob and with that i'm pretty sure that sums up most if not everything in the interior all right guys and like that we're gonna wrap up this walk around of the vehicle hopefully i didn't make this too long and boring and drawn out hopefully i just kept it simple short to the point hopefully i didn't miss anything and if i did miss anything it'll all be listed in the description below and like i mentioned earlier if you want to see more of a cinematic style my friends eric and LaShawn both did really awesome videos of the car this year with this exact setup um I can't do anywhere near as good job cinematic wise as they can. That's why I didn't even bother. I left it to them. They do this stuff all the time. They're great friends of mine. They're great videographers. They're great editors. So go in the description, click both of their videos, give them thumbs ups and all that good stuff. And just check out those videos because I absolutely love both of them. And they're incredibly done. And then, like I mentioned, also, if you do want to see a more in-depth walkthrough and rundown of the suspension on the car with it up on jack stands, and I'll do my best to include all the shots of the control arms, how I have everything set up and all that instead of just running through the parts on the car, comment down below. Make sure you uh, let me know that you guys want to see that, and I will have no problem trying to do it. I know I don't have a lift. I don't know how good of a video I can make out of it, but I will give it my best so that way I can answer all of your questions um, if you have any. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video. Peace out. And I'll catch you on the next one.